Carol Stimmel in Studio B at European Utility Week 2016. And now we are speaking with James Robin, who is the Group IS Director and CIO of the Northumbrian Water Limited Utility. Thanks for joining us in the studio today. It's great to be here, good. thank you. I hope you're having a good show. And um, I just wanted to uh, jump right in and ask you if you could just spend a brief moment, tell us a little bit about, um, about your utility, um, what, your, what your major interests are, especially in terms of uh, big data analytics, um, improving uh, customer outcomes. Talk a little bit about how somebody in your role as CIO addresses that and thinks about those problems. Okay, yeah, so as CIO, I'm a member of the exec team at Northumbrian Water. We serve five million people in the UK, uh, and we invest about uh, 200 million pounds sterling per year in improving our assets, improving our utility. We're operating about 30,000 kilometers of water mains uh, and about 20,000 kilometers of wastewater. So we're delivering drinking water to about two and a half million homes uh, in the northeast of the UK and also in Essex and Suffolk. We're billing the customers uh, and operating our 500 seat contact centre, dealing with about a million contacts per year. And then we're taking that waste away and we're turning that back into an energy product. We create gas from the, the waste. We call it power from poo. Uh, and data and analytics is part of all of those processes uh, right across the business. Um, we really do see data as the new oil, if you like, uh, in terms of delivering great customer service and delivering value to our shareholders. Okay, so you actually said a few things that I would really like to dig into. Mm -hmm. um, but first I'm gonna start at a, at a higher level. So okay. obviously you're concerned about the data related to uh, operational efficiency, leak detection, uh, maintenance, that sort mm. of thing. What, what role in general has data played in terms of uh, adding value to your organization, just to, you know, in the day-to-day -day operations and going one step further? Yeah, so I think we're, we're already in a big data world way back in utilities because we've had these real-time operational networks. We've got 300,000 sensors on our water network and we've had that kind of operation in place for 25, 30 years. So there's a, we're on to sort of third or fourth generation of, of big data. Um, and it, it's really everywhere. I mean, going beyond leak detection, we're using um, real-time control systems to control our real-time control system. So we've got a, a system called we call Aquadapt, which moves the water around our network to ensure that we've got resilience and that it's always available to our, our customer. But it moves it around very efficiently when the electricity price is low, um, when uh, we can uh, manage demand to, to just in time. And it ensures that we don't have any interruptions to supply. In fact, we're the, the number one uh, water company for interruptions to supply in the UK, uh, less than three minutes per property per year, um, thanks to the data and analytics uh, that we do autonomously. So you, on you our actually, network. you're actually getting recognizing your a return on investment. Mm. That's always the question that comes up when yeah. people are talking about smartening up their networks. But uh, you are with a water utility, right? Yeah. I've heard you mention electricity, and then. Uh, anybody who's watching this is going to really want to know what you meant when you said power to poo. Yeah, okay. So, so uh, take us through what a yeah. water utility is doing in these... So, yeah, so the, uh, the waste, uh, when it goes out of your toilet or down your sink, goes through our uh, network uh, and it gets to a sewage treatment works. Uh, we have about 400 sewage treatment works, but we have two big central sites uh, one is called Brand Sands, which is in Teesside, and one is Howden in Newcastle, with mm -hmm. the two big conurbations that we serve. Uh, and what we do is that when we treat the water, we put it back in the river or in the sea mm -hmm. cleaner than we took it out. Um, but there is a, a waste product uh, that we call sludge. Yeah. Um, now, that used to be dried out and uh, go off to farms as a because it has a, a nutritional value and help so farmers a fertilizer. grow fertilizer. Yeah. But it was seen as a waste uh, product, so we, we almost pay the farmers, if you like, to use the product, take it away. Mm -hmm. Now, what we're able to do, though, is tanker that sludge uh, to these two central sites, 
um, and obviously it arrives there via pipes as well. And what we do is we uh, combine that waste product with the uh, gas uh, and we burn that gas off and that creates energy uh, and um, that, create, that goes into a grid as a, a concentrated gas and is turned into electricity. But for, uh, for your own, so are you turning so, some of your own yeah, um, the, assets? What, so one site um, currently, uh, it needs about five million pounds worth of electricity per year to run at Brand Sands, and we create enough electricity to run that site. And at Howden, we are creating a surplus, so that is going back into the into the grid. So you're uh, selling uh, back into the grid, like yeah. like somebody, uh, like you would just with like your a PV. rooftop solar yeah, or something. Yeah, 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 that's so, right, yeah. Um, Interesting. Now, that, getting back to data, um, it's really important that uh, this sludge has a high calorific value because otherwise it doesn't create great gas. So now, in the sewage treatment process, we're, we're treating our waste product now like a fuel or a, a, so a calorific. So it's methane? So it's becoming a product. Yeah, it's a, it's okay. a biomass gas. And, um, and, it, and what we're doing is we don't want... A, a, a high watery sludge product we want concentrated sure, and as yeah, close to what we call cake as possible yeah. um, and we are measuring that uh, using data and getting our guys at the sewage treatment works to think about the waste now as a product rather than a, than a waste uh, and we're trying to get a higher and higher concentrations of uh, good high calorific gas uh, into the grid, so, so um, we're using data quite extensively to try and monitor and manage our performance in that space as well. That is really, really interesting. So, mm -hmm. I'm imagining that what you're learning and what you're doing, you know, frankly, I haven't heard of a lot of projects mm -hmm. like this. We were the first in the UK, but it is now becoming more common uh, in the UK uh, because it's a privatised market, and right. um, you know, you're, you're obviously wanting to deliver a great service to customers but also shareholder value. So we squeeze uh, but, but the juice out of, the, <laughs> out of everything sure. we do. Like, it, yeah. make. But the, what you're doing though is such an interesting technique that mm. a kid, it, it wants you, you know, you're using your data analytics mm. to, to really come up with the most yeah. efficient use of this waste yeah. product, right? But there's places in the developing world and you know, yeah. two billion people without electricity, that's the sort of, close system yeah. thinking that's very powerful and it's even powerful when you start thinking about um, a building certain buildings sure. and campuses and, and urban sure. environments so that's that's pretty we, exciting we, we have sort of taken it further now so um, that's obviously where we op we're a regional business so in region we're able to create power from poo but out of region we've just invested uh, uh, in a new site in Yorkshire where we don't supply water or, mm. or deal with the waste um, but we've got this skill that we've developed as a business and we've in, we're investing in chicken poo so we're creating you might have to uh, change your name. power from chicken poo yeah. uh, so yeah. we're, we're get, obviously collecting a waste product right. from farms um, and we are generating uh, a small amount of energy to, to go into the gas grid uh, with our sister company, which is Northern Power Grid. So that's really uh, sorry, Northern Gas Networks. Yeah, that's very innovative, and mm. it's it's also doing something that not enough happens in our industry, where we've we've tended to silo our efforts. So, for example, with uh, you know certain projects where you might take the spillage from a wind farm and pump it into the gas grid. Yeah. Um, that's hard to make happen, hard to affect because you have two different business models happening. Two yeah. different sets of pipes, different networks, but it sounds like not only have you figured out how to evolve this technology innovation, but you're also um, looking at business process innovation at yeah. all. So I would love to hear, so CIO, informa Chief Information Officer, mm -hmm. and obviously Chief Innovation <laughs> Officer. So, so tell us a little bit about um, how you do that. What, your, what, your, what does your process look like? So um, from an innovation point of view, um, there are, there are three types of innovation. Um, there is the top-down innovation, which is what we've really been talking about because anaerobic digestion, which is the process that uh, power, creating power from poo, um, really does require a big investment and it uh, requires you to, uh, as a group of investors, take some risk and you know, move outside of your business model. Um, but that, that's a top-down, uh, large-scale innovation. 
Uh, I think we're pretty good at incremental innovation. Um, we have a, a very mature workforce with many years experience in, uh, in our industry and they're very good at sort of incrementally changing, improving uh, processes all of the time. That's a, that has to be part of your culture though, for, yeah. uh, for um, any person to feel empowered to make improvements. Sometimes yeah. it's just go out and do the sure. thing that's on the piece of paper. We're, right? well, yeah, I think um, people uh, naturally will find small steps in the process mm -hmm. uh, to improve it. What we're working hard on with our culture is to create a more disruptive, this is the third uh, type of innovation, where we, we want, um, if you like, uh, bottom-up large-scale innovation or uh, people who are not afraid to challenge the, the current way of, of doing things and maybe create an anaerobic digestion too, but from within the organization rather than necessarily uh, uh, top-down. The reason we want to do that is because our industry regulation is changing mm -hmm. and they are introducing competition. So. In the UK, for electricity and gas, you buy it from a retailer, it's delivered via the grid, and then there's power generation as well. So there's, there's kind of four legs to the four types of business right. in electricity. And in water, that what's happening from uh, April next year is for B2B customers, business customers, they will be able to buy their water from any retailer. Uh, and so there'll be retail and wholesale uh, water, and there's going to be a competitive marketplace to sell uh, water. So we're realizing that we're going, to have to, we're going to have to wake up to that and we're going to have to encourage more innovation because it will drive uh, margins down, it will drive um, more challenge uh, and, and so we're going to have to be a lot more innovative and we right. can't rely on a top-down shelf for innovation. The innovation um, is such a buzzword. You yeah. know? So you talked about a couple of things, top-down, bottom-up, and then, so you, but generally you're talking about Sustain, sustaining in innovation and disruptive innovation. Yeah. It sounds like what you're telling me is that you're trying to figure out, sounds like you are figuring out, but you're looking at how to um, kind of make the creative space to allow a yeah. disruptive innovation sure. environment to occur. Is yeah. that fair? Yeah, and what we're doing um, right across the business is we're taking uh, some agile IT techniques mm -hmm. and we're putting them into the operations environment to try and drive that disruptive uh, innovations. Um, utilities are notoriously slow to change yes, and to yeah. get things done. Um, a lot of that is because of their process around investment, because of their size, um, but also their culture of, of being you know, risk averse, which is quite right. You don't want right. to poison people with right. in the yeah. water network. But in order to drive more value, to deliver better customer service, sustain ourselves as, as the industry leader, um, we recognize that we're going to have to go a little bit quicker at times and we're going to have to be a bit more concentrated in our efforts. So we've introduced the, the Google Sprint method, so the five-day off-site mm -hmm. event where we gather key stakeholders from, a, from around our organization to take a look at particular processes or particular things that we do and make them better, but not one step better, radically better. Um, so the best example I've got for you is in the customer service uh, space where we are one of the top three uh, water companies for service incentive, mm -hmm. which is a, right. a bit like a net promoter measure sure. in the UK that the regulator does. We're there, but we want to be number one and we want to be out there and our aspiration is to be recognized as customer service leader across the UK, like a John Lewis or a Amazon or something like that. Sure. Um, now, in order to get there, we need to be dramatically better. We can't just be leading the pack. We need to be way out in front. So we ran an innovation uh, week where we took 20 people out of the contact center, mixed them with different people from around our organization to look at the whole customer experience using the Google Sprint method. What, what came out at the end of that week is we launched um, a, we launched a digital product called Bomgar, which was originally an IT service desk tool where you could remotely look at someone's screen and see what was going on on their machine. But it can be deployed as an app to a customer's smartphone very rapidly. Um, and what we did is we took two, two processes where we score low customer satisfaction scores because we take ages to uh, get, get out and fix a leak in their home 
or get out and uh, fix some flooding, um, or go out, get out and fix a meter. And we speeded that process up by taking away the need to go and inspect uh, the property by doing it remotely via their smartphone. Mm -hmm. And we now have 20 agents set up with this right. Bongar tool. You can video from your smartphone into our contact center and get a faster feedback on whether it's the water company's problem to fix or whether you sure, need to yeah, contact the plumber. I wish I did that with a cable company. Yeah. But you know, I really want to thank you, James. Mm. It's, uh, you know, lots of times we hear about innovation and it's, mm. uh, we don't get much detail. You've given us a lot of detail on an operational innovation and mm. also a customer facing innovation. So I, re I really sincerely want to thank you for spending a few minutes with Angerati to, uh, to describe that to us. Thank you. It's been lovely talking with you. Thank you, James Robbins with uh, Northumbrian Water Limited. Thanks.